two number threes with small Daddy. orange juice. Daddy. What are you getting? And there's one more coming. What are you getting, man? No. There's, there's one more order coming. Oh, okay. I get sassy with us. Oh, that's all right. Maddie, what do you need? Uh, three hash browns with a small strawberry banana. Okay, color, color, color. And then can I get three hash browns and a small ban strawberry banana smoothie? Can't remember. She was snippy at me here once before. Maddie, what did you just say? Okay, say what I got you. No! <laughs> say what I got No, I cannot. Yeah. Let's let's see him. Are you kidding me right now? Three? Six. I got one. One. <laughs> Why I believe she has We are currently setting up bear spot for Maddie. And we're in the stand, we got the stands up, we got the bait right down there, and um, they're going to get some more bait, going to fill up the stumps and stuff, and then, yeah, we're waiting for him to get back, so, say hi. Hi. I didn't even have it going. Bread, frosting, all kinds of treats, donuts, pretzels, cereal. Wow, they're lucky bears. Guys, we got out of the woods baiting bears, but this is the Shramagon Bay up here in Lake Superior. Um, this is where Maddie's bear hunting, actually, right back in the woods behind this, but pretty cool view. There's a lot of trophy-sized smallmouth in here. Unfortunately, we don't have the boat with us, but someday hope to come fish this. But yeah, pretty neat place. Hope to be back here someday. Well guys, just started the video, didn't even say an intro yet. First cast, we hooked in a nice little smallie. We're fishing here in about 18 feet of water, it's kind of a little hump that comes up. Just have a little 8 ounce jig head on, and then this is like a 3 inch craw little um, bug. Very good smallie setup. Obviously it works very well, so go check out Venom Lures and get yourself hooked up with some of this stuff. Well, we had a little issue. Our coupler on our boat um, split and it's cracking and um, it should have, fall, should have fell off. So we're here in Woodruff and we stopped at the marina, picked up a new coupler. Dad's wrenching on it right now. So we picked up a new one and um, yeah, should get us home. So problem fixed. Alright, we're back out fishing for the afternoon, and uh, we just marked a school of bait fish down on bottom, and there's six or seven marks within the group of bait fish. So I tied on just this, I think this is a headbanger lures from Monster Bass, and then a Venom lures craw, and we're going to see if we can dig through them and catch one. So. Oh my god, guys, get the neck in. Oh my god, it's a monster small, a monster smallie. Oh, oh 
fish guys oh my goodness sakes oh my god what a pig a monster smally you think he shot a bull elk or something Get him back in the water. <sighs> Holy crap, guys. We literally just had this school, like I said. <sighs> we had this school down here. There was fish within them. And all I did, I threw it on, I brought it through, and um, I was just, just bouncing it, dragging it. All of a sudden, there's weight, okay? There's no taps or anything, just weight. I said it and I'm reeling him in. I just didn't think it was nothing special. Well, he when he jumped out of the water, I'm like, oh my god, that's that's an absolute tank. So we got him in and yeah, that's definitely that's only like my second smallmouth ever in my life. And it was an absolute tank, so sweet, let's catch another one. Gavin. Say hi to the video. Maddie, say hi to the video. We're catching pigs. So we were sitting there in the blind and we heard a big log snap. You know, something something that broke that thing was heavy. And it was like in the deer stand when you hear a twig snap, you're like, yup, there's a deer coming. Same thing here, it was, yup, there's a bear coming. And sure enough, we started seeing black spots coming through the branches. You could tell it was a nicer bear, but it wasn't till right about now when she walked out in the open that we could really tell, you know, man, this is a nice bear and uh, much bigger than the one the night before. 
And just her attitude when she walks in the bait, the way she carries herself, it just shows you that, you know, she's the dominant bear. And it makes all sense because that little bear from the night before was really skittish when she came in. And she was always looking around and really jumpy and like she was worried that another bear was going to come in and beat her up. So even when she grabbed the bait, you know, she ran out. And this, this makes us think that this bigger bear was off in the woods, you know, and that little bear knew she was there and knew that she didn't belong there and that that big bear would come in there and scare her out. So that's the reason she was jumpy. And so this bear, we wanted to make sure did not have cubs with it. So we gave it plenty of time. You know, we watched her for a long time, and right here you can see how she's sitting there. That's a, that's a dead sign that she is dominant. I mean, she, she feels more than comfortable at that bait site. You know, no bear is gonna come scare her out. So this is the bear I wanted, and I wanted, I wanted to make sure I got a good shot on her. So you can see right here she stands up, and it's she acts like she's gonna walk right out, like gonna leave. So I quick whipped the gun up, got on her. And squeezed one off and dropped it right there and it felt like a good shot so I knew I knew it was good but it worried us because you could hear her running for what seemed like forever into that brush and there was like a creek back there and we heard something cross the creek so it sounded like this bear went a long ways which means you know maybe I didn't hit her good so I felt really bad I was really nervous. I looked over at the footage a whole bunch of times. And here's a video you can see how I explained the situation and how I was pretty nervous about the shot. You can see we got one down. Well, we don't know for sure yet, but um, I had the crosshairs right on him. Pulled the trigger and I hit high and right. Um, I'll play back right here in the video. You can see um, I dropped him right there, but I must have just broke his shoulder or something because he got back up kept running and then we heard him just barreling through the brush um doing the huff and everything you could hear him gurgling blood and whatever but then he crossed the creek which is what we're um kind of worried about but we didn't really hear much after that so hopefully he's laying there we're waiting for the rest of the group to come to track him and pull him out of there but um yeah we're just praying for the best right now not exactly where we wanted to hit him but i mean stuff happens so I wish us best of luck. So as you can see, I put it in a slow-mo here so you can see it better. But when I shoot, that puff of smoke comes off the top of the right shoulder. And Bear's vitals are back more anyways, and there's nothing to hit up in there. Be just besides hopefully blowing up the shoulder and shooting, you know, pieces of bone into the lungs. But here's another view. You can see a little closer. That puff of smoke... Boom, right off the top of that shoulder. So we could have swore that I didn't hit her good. Um, but the way she dropped, it just, it looks like she's dead right there. But the way she crashed, we were worried. So we called up the guide and told him we shot one. And we waited for the rest of the group to come in and help track him down. And believe it or not, we got about 30 yards into that brush. And against everything we've been talking about, how I hit her bad, you know, the where I hit her just did not look good and we were worried. We got 30 yards into that brush and there's a dead bear laying there. Could not believe it, but the biggest sigh of relief, you know, to see that we were so worried that it hit her bad, you know, we had this hurt bear running around and very good feeling to see that bear, that bear dead, you know, and only 25, 30 yards back in there. So we figure that, um, that, that crashing we heard going so far was that little bear. You know, they switched spots to this night. And we heard that little bear crashing across the creek because this big bear went barreling in there, you know, after I shot her. So it all worked out really good. We went through Snowbelt Custom Outfitters. Uh, they're out of Iron Belt up by, kind of up by Hurley, a northern Wisconsin. It took us two nights to kill a bear. And we saw a bear the first night that I could have shot. It was a legal bear, but I decided not to. We had two bait sites. They fed us dinner every night. And they the processing for the meat and everything's included. So And they come drag it out for you too. So it was a really good deal. It was an awesome experience. And here you see me talk to the guide for a quick second and give him a big thanks and everything. 
Hey guys, uh, this is Jim. This is, my, this is my guide from uh, Iron Belt Custom Outfitters. He put me on the bear yesterday. Uh, couldn't be happier, so thanks to Jim. Uh, we'll put his website and phone number right here if you want to link up with him and come hunting. They do deer and bear, don't they? Yep. Right? All right. So big thanks to these guys for putting me on a bear. An excellent shot on that big one. Thank you. Thanks. I sure hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Clinch Outdoors because, man, did I like making it. This was fun. I mean, blowing stuff up with cannons at camp, meeting these guides. You know, they were fun and energetic, and they always pushed you to keep sitting because eventually you're going to shoot a bear. You know, you're going to shoot one. You're going to shoot one. So they always kept your hopes up. A big deal was experiencing this with my dad. That's something that we'll never forget. Uh, also, seeing they, them set up baits, you know, and cameras and watching these bears all summer, that was pretty neat to figure out how they do that. Uh, and even though a big part of it is shooting a bear, it was also fun to watch these bears in natural habitats, you know, and learning about them. So if you guys liked watching this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and we'll see you guys next time on Clinch Outdoors.